So the problem with getting the new GoPro Hero 10 and then recording your next vlog with that is that you have to see this ugly mug in super high res 4K. Um, yeah, sorry. Hi, welcome back to the Colorblind Architect Podcast, and I'm your host, David, and you know, I, I've been doing a bit more of the ARCHICAD tutorials, and I hope my viewers are watching that, they're enjoying it, I hope to do more of those, I'm, get, I'm gonna try to make more of them. They do take a lot more effort than these, um, well, what my wife calls rant vlogs, um, <laughs> where I... I either sit in the car or do something like this where I'm just complaining about stuff and yeah well and I can understand that these are definitely not as popular because obviously these can be well a little bit painful to watch first off you're having to listen to me stutter a lot you're having to listen to me rant about random stuff and yeah I'm sure it's not as pleasant to listen to this. So, why am I doing it? Well, because again, it's still important for us to speak out. It's still important for us to speak the truth. And I've been trying to do it. I've been doing this for over a year now, largely because I felt that I needed to get my voice out, add my voice to the voice of, you know, reason, you know, add my voice to the contribution to truth getting out. And now, do I know everything? No, I don't. Um, I, I honestly, I'm probably not the best person to be talking about this stuff, but I think everybody needs to be standing up and speaking out. Um, right now on Glenn Beck's show, he's He's talking about how the Great Reset is going full force. And, you know, whether or not you believe it, it's hard to not notice that ever since this pandemic started, every single government seems to be in line. Every single government seems to be around the world, seems to be going along with the same protocols, the same functions, the same repression of liberties. And although, yeah, I know there's a lot of people who believe, no, but it's a real pandemic. We, re we really need to be careful. Yes, I know it's a real pandemic. Okay. The problem is if you're going to have a response to a pandemic, it needs to be measured so that you don't destroy society, so that you don't destroy the economy, and so that you don't destroy everybody's livelihoods. Instead, in March 2020, they locked down the entire planet. You know, Elon Musk once said, if you don't make stuff, you have no stuff. So, where are we? We have supply chain problems all over the place. There constantly are problems with being able to just get normal stuff like building materials. And as an architect, that, that really bothers me because my clients are negatively affected by the fact that we can't even get building materials for them to be able to build stuff. And this is supposed to be okay. This is supposed to be okay because Oh, well, the Wizards of Smart, these, you know, Davos attending, you know, World Economic Forum types, they're like, yes, because we're going to build back better. We're going to remake the world into a better place where you will own nothing and be happy. And if you believe this crap, you are a useful idiot. Here's the thing, there is no magic pill. 
There is no magic sauce. There is no way that a bunch of idiots, yes, idiots, these World Economic Forum types, these, these, these people who claim to be the smartest among us, a lot of them have so many of their own personal flaws that they're alcoholics, they're drug addicts, or they're, they're constantly hiring hookers and stuff like that. There's a lot of these people who are just horrible wretches of human beings, and yet they claim, and I'm talking about politicians in general, and no matter what country you're from, if you're watching this, think about your politicians, your government leaders. Are they good, clean, honest individuals? Do you trust them to be wise and make good decisions for your life? If you do, I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to help you with your problem with stupidity. But most likely you recognize that you have corrupt leaders in your country. Whether or not it's in America, Canada, Denmark, Sierra Leone, South Africa, no matter where you are, I'm guessing, I'm just guessing that you have corrupt leaders that you wouldn't even trust to babysit your kids, let alone run your country. And yet you have them running your country. Why? Because unfortunately, they were the ones who were there. They were the ones who decided to get into politics and to run. Well, if you do get into politics, you if, if you're an honest person, you tend to get run out. You tend to get destroyed by the media because the media is also corrupt. Because in case you haven't noticed, your news media, your newspapers, your t television news, these people are thoroughly cor corrupt and lying to you all the time. So what do you do? I know as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, our church leadership tells us that we're supposed to listen to authoritative sources. And I've been having a really hard time with that lately. I've been having a really hard time believing my church leaders telling me to trust authoritative sources and by authoritative sources they're trying to tell me that that means you know like the big newspapers like the Washington Post and the New York Times oh yeah the ones who are lying to us constantly the ones who are provably lying where do you go where do you go for truth then have to admit, I feel a bit lost. I feel very lost. I feel betrayed by all the politicians, all the church leaders, and all the news media who have gone corrupt and have left truth by the wayside so that they can seek power, money, and glory for themselves. So what does the average person like you and me do? What do we do about it? Well, I think the first step is we need to be honest with ourselves. First, what do you have in your life that needs to go away? I've been working on that a lot over the past few years and especially recently, I finally confessed some things to my wife and we've been working through those things. I'm not going to get into the details, but it felt good. It especially felt good that my wife was forgiving of me for those indiscretions. And we worked things out and things are even better now. I've never been more in love with my wife now than I ever have in my life. And I've been working with my children. I've been trying to build a relationship with them. I've been trying to make sure that I can be there for them. And to do that, 
it's not about controlling them. It's about it's not about trying to tell them what to do. It's not trying to make them feel guilty for them maybe choosing to live a little bit differently than I do. Because let's face it, we all have that. We all have family members that we maybe don't um, feel like we're happy the direction that they're going, right? No, it's just simply loving them for the who they are and accepting them and and spending time with them not trying to control them or direct them but just spending time with them and it's amazing when you just spend time with them just have fun just enjoy being with them it's amazing how that changes everything all of a sudden they trust you more and you trust them more. And even though you're still going to have disagreements, it's okay. We don't need to agree on everything. Whether it be your neighbor, your family member, that's how we get out of this. Is every single individual, we all need to stop trusting the so-called wizards of smart. We need to stop trusting the government. We need to stop trusting religion. We need to stop trusting everybody, all these authoritative people who have consistently failed to live up to where they're supposed to be. And we're supposed to, and here's how we solve it. We become more like Jesus Christ. Where, yeah, sure. We render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. Yes, we pay our taxes. We obey the law within the bounds of when it's a legal and just law. I want to make that clear too. Because to these a-holes in Washington who are trying to write evil, perverted laws. I will tell you, I will only obey laws that comply with God's laws. Okay, I will do my best to abide by all laws that I feel do not violate God's laws. But if it's a law that clearly violates God's laws, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be civilly disobedient. Because that's what we have to do. So these vaccine mandates, yeah, violate them. They are unjust. They are not even a law. Okay? And why? Because it is unjust. There are people who can't even take vaccines. The immune suppressed or people who are undergoing cancer treatments or, you know, hey, by the way, you really shouldn't be sticking foreign substances into your body when you are pregnant. Yes. And again, I'm not a doctor, but... <laughs> I do know a few things about health, and one of them that I do know is that not everybody can take vaccines. Not everybody can take all medicines, because some medicines react poorly with a particular individual's body chemistry. So it needs to be an individual choice, and for it to be an individual choice, it also needs to be something that you have privacy. So do not comply with these unjust mandates. Instead, focus on living the best life you can. Focus on creating the best relationships you can with your friends, your neighbors, your family. Try to focus on making the world better in your sphere of influence. Because that, that is the limit of what we as individuals can do on our own. Now, collectively, yeah, we can probably do some amazing things. But I have this weird theory. I have this weird theory that um, if you're being a good person and everybody else is being a good person, all of a sudden, governments have no control over you, nor can they control you, because you're already governing yourself. And yes, I know there will still be tyranny. But to get through 
this tyrannical wasteland we're entering into with the Great Reset, where you have wizards of smart who think that they're going to remake society into this glorious paradise, and boy, haven't we heard this before. How many times do we hear people who are supposedly smart trying to argue the case for a utopia? Have you ever even read the book Utopia by Thomas More? It's a hellhole. And he was serious. He meant it as a beautiful, wonderful place. It would be an utter disaster. Same thing with communism. Same thing with John Stuart Mill and any other utopian ideal. Every single one of these people who comes up with these utopian ideas, they are all horrible dystopias once you actually get into the practice of it. So what I would prefer is to ma maintain individual liberties. Make sure every individual is free. Do you want to know the roadmap for that? It's really simple. Read the Declaration of Independence authored by my good buddy, cousin, Thomas Jefferson. I love Thomas Jefferson. He was great. Yeah, was he a flawed individual? Yes. Was he shacking up with Sally Hemings? Maybe, probably. But he was ultimately a good man. Flawed, but a good man. Just like George Washington, good man, flawed, but good man. So many good people have skeletons in their closet. So many good people are flawed individuals. In fact, I might say every single one of us is flawed. So how are you going to say that we're going to create this perfect society by a bunch of flawed indivi individuals? It's not possible because we are not perfect. So read the Declaration of Independence first. That is a really, really good primer on what we need to be thinking and feeling as human beings. And I'm talking about everybody on this planet. We need to be reading the Declaration of Independence because it is a document for all mankind, all people. Next, read the Constitution to the United States of America. Yeah, I know the American government is corrupt and they're not actually abiding by the Constitution anymore. Um, but the Constitution still has some really great ideas in it. I would say, most importantly, the Bill of Rights, but also the structure of government, the whole concept behind having a separation of powers the whole concept behind having checks and balances, the whole idea of limiting executive authority. Yes, we need to get back to that because our president is way too powerful. We should not be having a president with that much power. And I'm sure my foreign viewers would totally agree because you're probably thinking, yeah, America totally runs roughshod all over the planet. Well, yes. And... As an American, I apologize for my asshole government, okay? We Americans, you should know we do not want to run roughshod over the rest of the world. We're actually horrified what we're finding out about our government on a day-to-day -day basis. Realizing that we've been lied to, the public, the American public, we've been lied to by these assholes in the government. So, how do we do this? Again, find your God. It doesn't have to be a Christian God. It doesn't have to be like a magical sky God or anything like that. It can just be the principles that you want to live your life by. God can both mean an individual in heaven, but it could also mean, and this is what I think for the atheist among you, um, is probably the best answer is 
God is your highest sets, set of principles. The ones that you control your life under, you abide, you abide under those principles. And in other words, God is the word, God is the law, right? So it's your law that you govern yourself by. Find that. Seek deep. Next, you've got to find ways to make amends for all the things that you've done in your life that have harmed others. And you're not going to be perfect at it, but do your best. The reason is we need to have good relations with our family, our friends, our neighbors. We also need to have a good relationship with ourselves. We need to be able to know within ourselves that we can forgive ourselves. And we can't do that if we're allowing the problems in our life to get in the way. And then finally, we need to take action, make a commitment, do the things that bring, bring us closer to the reality that we want to see in the world. And whatever that is, that's going to be something that you're going to need to listen to the spirit. Um, when, when I say listen to the spirit, I mean, listen to your heart, try to study deep, listen deep and, you know, whether it be through meditation or through prayer, find a way to listen because you'll be surprised. You will feel things. You will, you will feel impressions that this is the direction that you should go. And if you do that and you make a commitment to follow that and you make a commitment to make the world a better place, I, I think we can actually pull out of this. I think we can actually, as a global population, overcome the evil and create a beautiful, beautiful world of freedom and happiness. It's not going to come from the top down, though. It's got to come from the bottom up. It's got to come from every individual's heart. And with that, I leave you again for another day. I hope this was helpful. If you actually watched this all the way through, thank you. You are awesome. And to all of my subscribers, I've been, I've been very blown away at how rapidly my channel's grown over the past few weeks with the new ArchiCAD tutorials. Again, this is not a replacement for that. I want to make it really clear to you. I will be making more ArchiCAD tutorials because that is something that I know is, can be helpful to many people and I hope to share my skills with others. Um, I also hope on making other, you know, more videos of hikes and skiing and you know, and also just architecture in general. I, I'd like to go visit some buildings and actually do some videos of buildings and show different things. Um, that's part of what I love about being able to do YouTube and Rumble is it, it's an avenue for me to share with others my passions, my beliefs, and hopefully it's helping you. Hopefully you're enjoying it. And if you do, hit like, hit subscribe, give me a rumble. And with that, I bid you adieu for another day. I'm the Colorblind Architect. Peace out.